Good afternoon. Welcome to our fifth AMA session or Ask Me Anything. My name is Kangshi Mehta and I will be the moderator of this chat. I'm also the member of the Pet Chef team and this is a partnership with Thinkly. Today we have with us Urmila Dharbokar and Gauri Keskar, founder, Good afternoon. Welcome to us. founders of the Tailwaggers Pet Salon. Welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Thank you for having us. Hi. So let's begin. Tell us your story. So now, how did this all begin? So okay. about 20 years ago, um, I, yeah, actually we'll let Gauri start because. Yeah, so about 20 years ago, um, we met. Uh, she had got her dog to the vet that I used to work at. And uh, she was also looking for something to do. And I was already working at the vet for about two years. And I had a little bit of grooming experience because at that time, as you may know, that there were hardly any breeds, you know, like there were forms and Dobermans and stuff like that. So I used to groom already uh, during that time and I had learned by myself. And uh, so uh, she was also looking for something to do. And she has a background. Of, she has worked with PETA and I've worked with uh, in defense of animals. And... Um, we decided to start a salon, like actually start a place to groom dogs. We had, didn't even think of calling it a salon at that time. It was just a place where people would get their dogs for grooming. So that's how we started with a small little place. In, in Shivaji Park. Yeah, 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 in Shivaji Park. And then as we realized, okay, now there are more and more breeds coming in. So then we moved to Bandra and now we have a bigger place there since a long time. And this is a grooming only for dogs. Are, are cats also allowed? Yes, it's for dogs and cats. But primarily dogs uh, and a few cats, like say some of the Persian cats or whatever, but primarily dogs. Yeah. Yeah. And how, so how did you get, how did you find yourselves in the Limca Book of World Records? <laughs> it's quite a funny story. <laughs> yeah. In fact, they contacted us. Like we had, we were also as quite flabbergasted. They were like, oh, you know, we're calling from Limca Book of Records. You're the first salon in the country. We'd love to feature you all. We were like, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, the truth is that, you know, when we first started, there were no other salons in uh, India. Bombay, India. At that time, we didn't know that there were no other salons in India. But we thought we were the only salon in Bombay. But of course, it was in all of India. And uh, oh. so we had a lot of uh, newspapers feature us right from, you name it, and they have featured us. Like, whether it's Times of India, whether it is... Uh, mm, Whole bunch of magazines, afternoon yeah. magazines, because we were the only salon, so everybody was like, "Oh my God, there's a salon for dogs!" And also, I think there was a, you know, there was also that uh, this thing of you know women entrepreneurs, yes. something different, yes. following your passion. There were lots of these plugs that you know media found very fascinating. Now, of course, it's a different scenario because there's totally, so many. Totally. But twenty years ago, I think we were quite. Yeah, uh, and it's and actually, it's just the last. 15 years that this has happened that now everybody has a dog. Yeah. And you must remember that when we started for the first 5-7 years, it was a very, very niche uh, business. Like a very, very niche market. And so it was very, very different. I remember because I had uh, I had dogs when I was younger and uh, we were told to give them a bath at home. They had like the, the shampoos were expensive. And then we had to give them, and then um, uh, when it yeah. we didn't shave hair because I had a Labrador, but um, even cutting nails, yeah. we went to the wet to cut the nails. We didn't cut our nails ourselves, very rarely because yeah. we were too scared something might happen. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I even yeah, I, right. I, because the concept of a pet salon, I'm like, I, I, it didn't occur to us at that time. So now no. things have really changed. It totally changed. At that time, it was completely different. Yeah, totally different. Um, tell us, why is grooming so important? So I and think what most of the thing is that uh, most people now are getting in a lot of these exotic pedigree breeds that really aren't bred, A, for our climate. Also, they're difficult to groom at home. You know, the coats are thick uh, and stuff like that. A lot of people also, even if they can, you know, it's everybody's busy. So, you know, to actually take out time and groom your dog and stuff like that is not always possible, even if you have the intention. So, I think you're regularly grooming your dog now has become more of, it's not such a, so much of a luxury as a necessity. Because, and, yeah. Yeah, and also it's necessary grooming your dog is important because, um, A, it keeps your dog clean. And when you get your dog to a salon, uh, when we are blow drying and when we are bathing the dog, there are a lot of times that we, 
find issues with the dog that even the pet parents have overlooked you know so like whether there is a like you know some skin problem or there is a little bit of a growth here or a little bit of a growth there or an so, ear infection yeah. there is lots of things that we are yeah, able to yeah, point yeah, out yeah, yeah. because it's such a hands on yeah, yeah yeah and we like we are seeing the dog right from like the the full dog when while we are blow drying and everything and you know we are ha- we're totally hands on like she said so and it's also important a because uh, it keeps your dog clean and b because nowadays people have dog it's not like dog is not outside the house right so they are in the house they are in on the bed, bed. yeah they are like you know all part the of your family Yeah. So it's not about so, all your dog keeping your dog tied out. They're with your children. They're with you. They're on the bed. Yeah. So then it totally becomes a necessity. And like she said right at the beginning, um, because of the different kinds of breeds that are there right now, if you don't groom them regularly, they get knotted. They'll have ticks and fleas. So you have to get them groomed regularly. Yeah, and of course, um, their skin is different from ours. So you have to figure Absolutely. out a bit moisturize. The coat should not be coarse. Yes. Yes, uh, yes. Bright and shiny. Particular shampoos and so many uh, things. You know, which shampoo to use on which dog? What? How to figure it out? The coat, depending on the coat of the dog, depending on the uh, different uh, colors of the coat. So there are different specific shampoos for different things. And then also sometimes what happens is vets send prescription. So like you know, you keep a shampoo on for ten minutes. Now that's always not like if you have a small dog. It's you know, but when you have Labradors, Retrievers. Even small dogs yeah, are great. So difficult to do at home. Yeah, to because put a shampoo, really, keep it yeah. on. These are not easy things to do. There are some, of course, who do it, but primarily people find it it's, much it's, easier to just yeah. come drop the dog. And also, they, I think they realize they have this comfort. They come the first time. They meet Gauri and me. They meet our team. We're all dog crazy Completely, people. Yeah, and then yeah. they realize, okay, you know what? It's so much more convenient to kind of just yeah, get yeah. it done professionally. Then, um. What should pet parents look out when it comes to grooming? What 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 care should they do? So it's mainly, um, like I said earlier, one is that um, keep a watch on the ticks and fleas situation because of our climate. It's uh, they it can get out of hand. The humidity really doesn't help at all. So the yeah. ticks and fleas are a year-round issue. Absolutely, that's one thing. Secondly, that um, they they shed twice a year, right? That's seasonal shedding so during that time they need more grooming because otherwise the hair is all over the house yeah. so there are de shedding shampoos and stuff like that that we use and the most important thing is that mostly like a lot of times we joke that you know that uh, we have a salon for shih tzu because the most common breed right now are shih tzus and maltesers and these breeds not maltesers that much but shih tzus get completely knotted like matted yeah. their hair gets knotted and most people just look at the outside coat and then they think that oh no no that uh, he's not matted or she is not matted but it's the under coat that gets knotted mm-hmm. and right under the knots uh, then the dog starts getting fungal infection so j- these are the things that you need to look out when you have these exotic breeds you know while are you taking care of the skin are you taking a look at the skin make sure that the dog is groomed regularly comb him at home so these are the things you know under the paw the hair He's cutting because he's going out for a walk, so he'll collect all the dirt. Then there are the main issues, of course, ticks and fleas are the knots. These are the two things which are really important. So I, I I know I know especially small breeds, their skin is very sensitive. So absolutely, brushing them out, you have to be very careful. Very careful. And a very. lot of times, you know, a lot of we have people say, oh, but you know, we my staff brushes the dog, but how is he getting knots? What you they, what a lot of people actually said don't realize. Is that these breeds? They don't have just a single coat. They have a thick coat. Double. So coat. it's like me brushing my hair here. But if I if I if I washed my hair and if I just brush this, the knots are going to start acting at the root of the hair. Correct. Now it's not fair to expect your staff to know how to brush like an exotic poodle's coat or a you know Bichon Frise's coat. It's not fair. So a lot of people are like, but my. You know my my boy does it. My girl does it. Or even yourself. They do it. They they don't realize. Oh, but I comb them every day. No, but these you know are... we have slicker brushes. We have specific combs, and there is a difference in getting a blow dry at a even for a human at a salon and doing it at at home. Yeah, there is a difference. And so, uh, yeah, the things to watch out for 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 pet parents is basically these these are the things. You know, knots, ticks, skin problems. Yeah, stuff like that. So ideally, new pet parents, when they're adopt, whether they 
get a pure breed or whether they decide to adopt ideally should consult their vet as to how to groom and then come to you and like absolutely. these absolutely are- absolutely first go to the vet get yeah. all the all the checkups, checkups done. done the vaccinations done and then come to the uh, groomer with, you know the groomer to find out that what should be their uh, grooming schedule depending on what breed yeah and also another thing that we also tell a lot of our uh, clients is that it's very important to start the whole grooming process as Absolutely. young as possible what happens right. is once the vaccination and all are done obviously and the vet has given an okay bring the shiddu or whichever breed it can be a golden retriever it can be an indie it can be whatever if they get into the practice of being groomed it's just easier for them because what happens is suddenly you bring a 4 year old dog to a salon they also don't know what's happening you know to get bathed by somebody else put on a table drying it's a bit of a you know if they used to it from when they're puppies it's just an it's overall easier, an easier yeah, experience yeah. okay so now um I've got all this information. Explain the process. So I bring my dog. I have a golden retriever. So I bring my dog to you. So explain your entire process. What happens so inside first, this? Yeah. Okay. So first, when uh, let's say your retriever comes in, so we find out from you is there any specific shampoo you want us to use, or suppose you tell us no, we just want like a deep conditioning bath or an aroma therapy bath. So we have these different different uh, uh, baths. some of them are of course medicated baths that the vet prescribes but some of them are these lovely you know luxurious baths that they can have and we have lot of these people who come on the dog's birthday or on you know but that's a separate uh, thing and then so he gets combed out first and then we check if there are any ticks or fleas or anything like that so first we get the primary information from you then once you leave we comb him and check if there is anything then we take him for a bath and we decide which shampoo depending on what you told us and and we decide like what's good for his coat then he has his bath and then he gets like a little bit of a massage during the bath and you know dogs know people who love them they just instinctively know it so the minute they meet us they are just until the parent is around they are different the minute the parent goes they are all like You know, they're all and, and we're very lucky to have staff also who are complete dog lovers. And frankly, it's not possible to do what we do day in and day out unless you're a dog lover. Because yeah, like a dog lover. You know, you're covered with dog hair. You're with dogs the whole day. So our Absolutely. staff is just we're very Amazing. lucky to have yeah. great staff. So and the dogs, I think, pick up on that vibe. Yeah. So then they are enjoying their bath. Eighty percent of them. Then some of them, of course, don't like it. So then you have to hold them or whatever. and then they come out they get totally completely blow dried towel dried first yeah first towel dried then completely blow dried brushed rebrushed if there are knots then that's a longer procedure for but not for a golden retriever like you said your is a retriever and then once the uh, blow drying is done the ear cleaning happens the nail clipping happens the under the paw hair cutting happens and you know some people like the underbelly hair and all the hygiene get, area if they want to get it trimmed short. under the tail all that and then they are ready for their bows or scarves and then there's a photo session in the salon which is the <laughs> most funniest part yeah of our entire day because right in the middle when all the dogs are getting groomed one dog is ready and then everybody is like uh like for instance if your dog name is louis like louis you're louis. trying to get the perfect shot <laughs> trying to get and then the dog is so confused he's like sometimes he's doing this, this and we get some really cute pictures really cute so pictures so it's it's that's the most fun part of the grooming because yeah. then we have some toy we you know you squeaky toy squeaky toy and all of staff will start making funny sounds because they want the best shot <laughs> and then So it's like getting a toddler ready for a photo. Absolutely, it's full on like that. Yes, absolutely. And then you know, with their scarves and all, they are posing, and then they 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 are also confused because they are like, "Hmm, what's happening? Why is everybody calling, calling my name?" <laughs> and then also another thing we ask is, uh, there are most people want we have dog perfumes. I mean, which is specially yes. formulated for you know their skin pH type and all that. There are some who ask us not to put it either because either the dog has a skin infection or, or somebody has poor mouth. Like, yeah. Smell, or so. allergy, right? Yeah, or an yeah. allergy. So, and then if that's not the case, then we have a nice spritz of this lovely smelling perfume. You know, and the dog is and ready to go. Ready to go by by which time, like then the yeah the we've called the know, parent. Yeah, the pet parent yeah. comes to pick him up. 
So it's like a full hour, hour and a half process. Hour and a half, for approximately. Sure. Again, depending on the coat, depending on the size, depending sometimes on the temperament of the dog. Oh yeah, sometimes it yeah. So we, longer. you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, will my dog be ready in one hour?" And it's actually really important to realize that it is a living, breathing thing. Like humans, there are some days that the dog may not be, you know, very cooperative. So there's no like we can't. It's not like oh, sixty minutes means sixty minutes. That sixty minutes could be seventy-five minutes. It could be forty-five minutes. So we always give an approximate time by which a dog a yeah. dog is going to be ready, and call ten minutes before. Okay, we have a couple of questions that have come that have come. Sure. Uh, Neha Ravikant says, "I have a Pomeranian. How often do you suggest they should be given a bath?" And then a follow up. That was my next question. How often should you should you be giving your dog or cat a bath? I, I definitely cats and dogs are two entirely different topics. So about the yeah. dogs, I think. I'm mean, about one, yeah once every yeah once every twenty day you know give or take see again this is not a definite answer because it depends on how how often you take your dog out is he a more indoor dog does he get more dirty so again it's not like one answer fits hmm. it, All, it, it but, depends yeah but approximately about uh, three weeks and we do have uh, dogs who come to us weekly every, yeah ten every days week or every ten days but we think that. I think maybe three, yeah, two to two, three weeks. Yeah, between is, two is to good. three weeks is good. Not more than that, for sure. If you give your dog a bath too often, then the coat becomes dry, or it yes, there or are you certain suffer from hair for uh, like fur fall or something like that. That's I'm not low. to do. I don't think it's to do with over grooming. Okay. It's just that they have a natural oil, so you don't want to be yes, depleting that they, oil. Yeah, that oil What? gets depleted if you do it. Like there are some people who they tell us that they. You know they bathe their dogs every three four days at home. That's absolutely not okay. Yeah. So we feel once in fifteen days is okay, but even once in three weeks is fine. Like personally, I have three dogs and I get them bathed once every two weeks. Two weeks. They're very yeah. low on our list of priority, and our their appointment keeps getting shifted. <laughs> but yeah, I try for once every two weeks. <laughs> Then yeah, uh, so Neha, yeah, once in uh, three weeks is good. Yeah. Once in three weeks, yeah. Yes. I think uh, pretty much all the vets uh, they say the same thing. Once in three yes. weeks, one yes. vet or once a month. I mean, But again, that's also not. A, there are no right or wrong answers. It all depends on the breed. But yeah. like, like if Neha's dog is a Pomeranian, yeah. then I would say about once yeah. every twenty yeah. days, twenty one days and, is good enough. And there are some people who have to get them bathed once in ten days because, like I said earlier, they take their dog on the bed, they sleep. And the dog goes down, so then they want the dog bathed. Like, every yeah, day. we have a lot of clients who say, you know what, my dog is sleeping with my two-year-old daughter in the bed. So now, you know, then I have no option. But then what we do is for dogs that come very often, we're using a much milder shampoo. Much milder, much milder. You know, so we're very milder. careful about that. Yeah, yeah, much. That's my house. So my dog sleeps with my. There you go. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then Deepa, Deepa is asking. I have a cat. Are there any cat salon, cat salons in Mumbai? But they can yes. come to right. Yeah, we are. We groom. No, in fact, earlier we used to groom much lesser cats, but now there are lots of cats because people are getting more and more pets. You see, so therefore the number of cats is also on the rise. Please, that yeah. we definitely groom cats. So you're most welcome, yeah. Deepa. Uh, then Nitesh is asking: Is it tougher to give a spa to a double-coated dog? I have a German Shepherd, and it's a task. I mean, I we we hear you, Nidhi, because at, at home it's always at home it's it's a task. A and double coated German Shepherd. I mean, if you're doing really it hard, that's a great job. But yeah, for us, because to here brush it's up, not. Yeah, here it's it even here it's tougher for us than a single coated. But of at course, home, it's course. it's a longer process. Yes, exactly. But because we, like I told you, when they. You know when you're giving your dog a bath at home, it's a circus. It's a circus. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah, you know you have a retriever. I'm sure you've tried it. It's like a you're getting bathed yourself. He's moving, trying to jump. Yeah, all sorts of things. But uh, so yeah, to answer her question, it is difficult to do it at home. If you get it done professionally, it's easier. But if you want to do it at home, also once a you know once every alternate time or whatever. Just comb him out nicely before the bath. Yeah. Then it might become easier. And the most important thing is to make sure that when you're drying the coat, dry it up to the root, not Very just important. the top. Because if the inside stays wet, it's like when shoes in the monsoon when you, when they catch a fungus. So don't yeah. just dry the top coat. Make sure you're drying not on hot, not a hot air blast, obviously, 
कूल टू मीडियम है बट मेक श्योर यूर गेटिंग टू द रूट ऑफ द हेयरिंग आउट द कोट कम्प्लीटली एंड मेकिंग श्योर द स्किन इज ड्राई सो ब्रशिंग योर जर्मन दिस इज रियली हेल्पफुल I'm sure a lot of people will understand now how de- how grooming is absolutely so important. Yes. Yes. Um then Vinita has, has is asking has a pet parent ever asked for a hair dye? I've seen this in like Korea and Japan. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah no 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 it's in Bombay also we have we've done pink ears for shizus a blue tail for a lassa so we have a dog dye which is very I mean it's formulated specially again yeah. for Yeah, it's all made. It's all natural. Oh, yeah, all natural. All made out of some vegetables and yeah. So it lasts like about that. like some very four, less four washes lasts. or whatever. But the one thing that we are very the thing is that we won't like we've never coloured a whole dog. Like just maybe the tip of the tail, the tips of the ears or something like that. We've got we've done, but we won't. We will usually not agree to do the full dog because that I think my yeah, maybe it's pushing it a bit yeah. much. But ears and tail and all yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dyeing a whole dog is just cruel, though. Yeah, yeah we it's, think it's we we think so, which is why we yeah, we wouldn't yeah. do it. But tips of the ears and tip yeah. of the tail and all yeah. is fine, especially because it's a safe dye to use. And in three and it's three four washes, yeah, it's out. Three washes, it's out. Yeah, it's like how you get temporary hair color for humans. Yeah, yeah, and they are very. This is a company which makes really very safe. good product. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lee, no, I wouldn't dye my dog. <laughs> <laughs> But if I had a probably smaller, little fluffier dog, maybe one. Yeah. Just for, yeah. Just, just the fun. tip of the tail and all. You know, it's not touching the skin at all. Yeah. And we only do it for dogs who are okay. There are some dogs who love hanging with us. Okay. Like they fall asleep <laughs> and all in the salon. Yeah. So those that then we don't mind because it's okay. They are enjoying it. They're, They're not hanging. getting trouble at all. Yeah. I I'm I, I'm assuming it's because of the massage. Like any why would yeah anybody- yeah. And they get hugs. They get cuddles. And I can't tell you how much our staff is talking to them all the time. All, all the time. time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Ba ba ba. So you know, it's they get fully yeah, pampered. Full pampering. Wow. Now you and I should do one for humans. <laughs> <laughs> What can pet parents do at home to keep their dog well groomed? And I'm assuming even nutrition plays an important part. extremely important part so the right nutrition of course which you can speak to the vet about you can do a mixture of wet food and dry food i mean like food that you cook at home a little bit of it with like less salt and stuff like that and the uh, dry food but that you can speak to the vet which is breed specific and stuff like that and there uh, are no excellent coat tonics available as well in the market but again after speaking to the vet yeah but like you said this coat tonic there are some which are available which you Don't need to speak to the vet unless there is a health issue. Yeah. So you can to just give one teaspoon once a day. It's more than enough. There is there are. It has omega three and yeah. all of that for the coat. Yeah, really good. These coat tonics. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. These are really good coat tonics are available, and combing regularly, and checking for ticks and fleas regularly. These are the another two. thing I think that a lot of people tend to do is um, you know, when the dog comes back from a walk. The paws are dirty. A lot yes. of people wash the paws. We understand the need to keep the paws clean, but what happens is if you're washing the paws, make sure you're drying the paws. Because again, again going back to the earlier thing is that if the skin is staying wet, it's going to catch a fungus. So ideally, maybe just use either a wet wipe or something. Yeah. Or if you're going to wash them, make sure you dry the paws, please. Because we get a lot. This is one thing we really wish to tell pet parents that we get a lot of. dogs who come to us with a pre existing fungal and then whenever we ask the owner they say it's a we wash his feet every time hum log detol se dhote hain ye karte hain don't do stuff like that no. you know wet wipe is best Or, and if you're going to wash with just plain water make sure your towel drying it and with a cool to warm air hair dryer uh, make sure the paws are dry don't yeah. keep anything wet yeah so these Also, are the few things to answer our question yeah Yeah, sorry. So also, when it comes to ticks and fleas, is uh, um, it's extremely important for them to understand how to remove a tick because even if the head remains, that's a big problem. Absolutely yes. correct. Yes, if the head remains in the skin, then they it can cause like a infection, you know, like an infection and boils, and then you'll have to go to the vet and get that sorted. So we think the most important thing is to have regular. Tick and flea prevention 
you just have like you follow a particular pattern that you have that twice a year you give either this tablet called brevecto which is only after speaking to the vet you don't get it anywhere else any way other than at a vet it's a brilliant tablet according to us if the dog does not have any, any exa- uh, yeah health and health yeah. issues and to be honest in the last 4 years ever since this tablet has come into the picture like 4 5 years we the we have noticed the tick infestation has highly reduced then uh, there are yeah. some there are some vets who don't recommend it but again it's also if your dog has you know some liver kidney whatever depending on you know those issues then you can't give it but yeah. then i suppose you can get spot on which is just topical which application excellent also so both these things so if you have a schedule that you follow a tick and flea prevention schedule then you're pretty much sorted another thing which we recommend to all clients and we like to tell whoever's listening in getting a pest control done at home for ticks and fleas is very important because yes. a lot of people believe that ticks and fleas live on the dog which is not true they come on the dog for feeding and live in the environment now so many people say but you know we keep our house very clean i'm sure everybody does but these ticks are so tiny that they're in the you know in the joints between the floor and the uh, wall in cracks stuff like that regular pest controls don't work on ticks and fleas so whether you're using pci or pcop or any godrej or whatever you're using whichever pest yeah. control most of them have a specific pesticide for ticks and fleas so, so at least twice that. a year yeah. you should just get that done because these ticks come on the dog feed and live in the house it's yeah. like a mosquito coming to bite you they're not living on your body so mm-hmm. getting a pest control done at home also really it's helps great. and with- especially when you start if you see a tick and flea in, on the dog then you should definitely get it okay that's pretty helpful i uh, because our, our my older one a uh, long time ago he had a really bad tick infestation and then it was coming out from the bed exactly oh, exactly it, it, so it was so we had to actually do a full disinfection and the cleaning and everything yeah so yeah. before it ever gets to that point you should just like what what i do at home is just twice a year schedule it so Absolutely. we don't wait till it becomes that that to come yeah i'm just going to schedule yeah, it twice what, yeah what she's saying is absolutely right but just in case you can't yeah you do it regularly if you can't for any reason yeah. then if you see a tick or flea on your dog then you should definitely yeah, get it yeah yeah immediately also coming quickly back to the um cleaning of the paws uh would it help if they wore booties when they went out for a walk If you get your dog used to it from when they were puppies, then yes. And I think it's amazing how people can. My dogs just refuse it. So if you can, great. I mean, they look silly, but yeah, it's very useful, especially in the monsoon and all that. But again, this is something you have to start when they're puppies, because otherwise they just become like they don't know. At three or four, you put socks on them, they don't even. <laughs> have you seen those funny videos? Yeah, yeah. Trying to like, yeah. 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 So if you can get your puppy used to it from when he's a baby. then i think it's a great idea as long as it's comfortable fitting him well and all that and then it's a great idea and, and otherwise then you just do clean you know clean with the wet towel or, or you no know, wet yeah wet towel, towel at yeah. home yeah uh now like you said earlier now a lot of people have these really high maintenance dogs i'm talking about your saint bernards your malamutes your huskies your collies and more and more exotic breeds now i know their fur is a fur you need to take care of their fur and and especially during winter they develop a thick undercoat so and of course these dogs need to be refrigerated because they are used to minus degree weather they so, call siberian uh, huskies for a reason they're from <laughs> siberia yeah i've seen videos of um huskies burying themselves in snow and sleeping because the snow insulates when they buried yes. in snow it insulates and they have an undercoat that helps them to keep warm now i'm now they have this really thick undercoat during winter how do pet parents of those dogs take care of their fur i mean again going it's a pretty much similar answer to as i yeah. said earlier just brushing regularly that, keeping yeah, the dog that, as that. cool as possible in the summer months making sure they're not going on walks at like 12 o'clock in the afternoon and 3 o'clock in the afternoon changing their schedule That's a little bit important. i do it for my i have three indies and in the summer months i make sure their walks are earlier in the morning and later in the evening and my dog literally are indie coat so especially for these This thick coated dogs important. change yeah. their walk schedule yeah. let them instead of say 8 o'clock let them go for a walk at 
instead of say a 530 let them go for a walk at 7 make sure you're keeping them out of the sun as much as possible this is for the summer months make sure their water bowls are constantly filled with fresh water yeah and grooming is just um just brush uh, them as often yeah, as possible brush them and you get these um you know pr- specific brushes for uh removing the undercoat, undercoat and loosening it out and getting it out so that they have not as thick a coat mm-hmm. as yeah i mean would. because if you're going to bring them and make them live in a tropical climate then you're going to have to make these adjustments yeah, and but these are high maintenance yes breeds. absolutely they are very high maintenance breeds so when we get you know these breeds of uh, to coming in for a bath like a whole like a whole this much like literally like a whole you can make a dog of the hair that comes out the when we are from <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so then that sort of makes them lighter and then we we do get a calls from the owners i mean from the pet parents saying that uh, he is feeling better he slept you know, like he, a baby yeah 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 so yeah this combing is very important especially like you were saying in the winter months when they develop uh, like thick a thicker undercoat. undercoat just brushing out right from the uh, skin i mean doing it at home might be difficult but yes you can definitely try and do it and there are nowadays if you go to a pet shop you do get uh, slicker brushes yeah, and then formulators and stuff yeah. but only thing is one word of adv- just a caution here that all these brushes are uh, they're very good but they must be used in the correct technique you don't want to be hurting your dog yeah, and correct. again with no disrespect meant to i mean there are we have uh, you know dogs coming in whose staff is as crazy about them as the you know pet parent is but it's not fair you can't give this fancy looking one furminator that has you know sharp teeth and give it to the you know your whoever's help and say be brush karo it's not mm-hmm. always fair on them yeah. it's not fair on the dog it's not fair on the staff That's also true. to be you know we've you know watched videos we've trained our staff so there is a particular method of doing it yeah. so maybe educate your that people can go on to youtube now there's so much information available yeah. on the internet yeah say you know how do i groom my siberian husky at home yeah. how do i use a slicker brush you know yeah. stuff like that and you get really good under rakes which under-rakes. actually remove loosen the undercoat yeah so but to answer yeah, your question wa- so watch videos learn how to use those tools properly and do it at home yeah and of course these are high maintenance but so uh, breed so you know they do come for grooming yeah. so once in 3 weeks so once we a are month they anyway. are taking care it's getting done anyway i imagine the vacuuming must be a nightmare <laughs> it is <laughs> yes it is so like that's why she said now that only a, a complete doggo holic can work at a salon because we are covered like all our clothes are covered with dog hair from head to toe we are covered with so we can like in the, like for example we don't if we have to go like if you have to go for like a business there is no like a work day lunch or a work day dinner that you can go for and because you're going covered with hair so any time they give it a birthday or whatever and we are landing up at a restaurant in our work clothes covered with dog hair yeah. i mean our friends are now used to it because it's yeah. been 20 years yeah. but yeah but it's just that love i mean if if you yes. don't have dogs that means then you won't have fur on you always correct absolutely yes, yes. absolutely <laughs> i i keep my husband and i keep telling people like if you do an autopsy on if we die and you do an autopsy on us there will be dog fur More, 100% 100%, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> because we can get also also the course with high maintenance and then during the summer months the um should we be trimming the hair or shaving the hair does it help shaving no we don't recommend shaving for sure cutting hair yes we do we depending on the we recommend yeah. yes R- reducing the thickness of the coat definitely. we do not recommend shaving unless again if the vet has recommended you know yes. something for this because some ointment or shampoo needs to get to the skin directly then sometimes a we dog has no i mean we have no option and then yeah. we shave but otherwise we just recommend keeping a dog's hair to a length which is a com- comfortable for the dog and also looking cute because you know you don't want like one you know yeah. scrawny yeah. looking thing so a, a length that's cute comfortable easy to maintain at home but yeah i i mean mumbai has strongly actually yeah. recommend uh, cutting your dog's hair because imagine a uh, living imagine right now if i were to tell you in the summer months you wear a fur coat the whole day even if mumbai. the ac was on if somebody says you still wear one sweater and sit you're still going to be hot yeah so we definitely recommend a uh, short like not very short but we definitely recommend trims like a good trim summer trims and i can't tell you the number of uh, shih tzus 
Maltese's, Lassa's, even golden retrievers. You yeah. said you had golden retriever. All these breeds come to us for short haircuts during summer, and they all tell us that he is feeling much better after the haircut. So that is real. That's the job satisfaction. Yeah, and the us. thing is, I think a lot of people when they hear the word haircut, they're immediately assuming shave. Actually, that's not true at all. We actually can cut your dog's hair, say, reduce it by twenty five percent or reduce it by fifty percent. A haircut does not does not translate to shave. It's literally you can reduce the thickness by a. Like there are people who actually give us very specific briefs. Yeah. That we want the body cut thirty percent, legs cut twenty percent. <laughs> we're used to those kind of briefs also. But if you leave it to us and ask us for our opinion, we're happy to actually you know look at your dog and suggest yeah. something. Let's say maybe let's just take out forty percent of what's on him or sixty percent of what's on her. It yeah. doesn't a haircut doesn't have to be a shave. Yeah. But yes, we do recommend it. Definitely haircuts. recommend it. In the, in, the mo- in the summer months and the monsoons. monsoons. Yes, yes. Also, Gauri, much earlier when we were chatting, you said dogs feel shy after if you, if you shave them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was yeah, a yeah. big fact. <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny because, uh, so, you know, earlier when I'm talking about 20 years ago, when people would come and they would say, you know, ekdam chota karna hai, ekdam chota karna hai. And then later we realized that after uh, giving uh, your dog, uh, I mean, after shaving them, they actually hide under the sofa and don't come out for their walk and all. So that that's when we realized, oh my God, they are feeling shy. So over the years, we realized that if you cut your, your dogs, your pet's head too short, they do feel shy for a couple of days. And then we recommend, that, yeah, then we recommend that if you have to do it for whatever reason, then we say, listen, please put on... Like a T-shirt or something, like a, like a baby T-shirt. T-shirt or whatever. <laughs> for some reason, if you have, and we actually, because the thing is, you know, either they're feeling shy, then they don't go for walks, don't want to come out to eat. So yeah. instead of doing all of that, we just say, you know, for some time until the hair grows back, put on a baby T-shirt. Yeah, and you won't believe it. People call us back and tell us that, uh, Achha, ye, uh, after, you know, after ye T-shirt dalne ke baad, phir wo abhi all back to normal. <laughs> so they actually get self-conscious. Yeah, yeah. Self-conscious. self-conscious. Yes, they do. <laughs> and you know, I mean, going ahead on this, there are some people who call us and tell us, you know, wo grooming ke baad aata hai aur wo bahut post bhi karta hai hamare liye photo ke liye jab hum bolte hai, photo nikalna hai bow ke saath because you know, we put those either bows, a bow tie or these yeah. bows. Or we, put a bow, we put bows for the lasas, okay, and the shizus, these two bows for the girls. So then they say, are wo bahut <laughs> Thank you. Uh. So it's so cute to hear that, yeah. you know. That is really, really sweet. I know, I know for Lewis, I come to you for Lewis's grooming. So I know you have his yeah. little poem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, looks, he looks full chaka chak. <laughs> we do, love Lewis. He's very sweet. <laughs> what do most pet parents get wrong when it comes to grooming? I, I know one is the ears, don't get the ears wet. What do they get wrong? You're saying when you're grooming at home? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plug, put your, put some cotton wool in the ears. Uh, make sure you're using dog shampoos a lot. Like a lot of people say, oh, you know, we just use oh, head and head shoulders. And, shoulder. <laughs> and we're like, no, you can't do that. So you get, there's an amazing, like back in the day, you didn't have that many options. You go to a pet shop now, it's as much as you go to a human uh, shop. So you get, get the right range. shampoo. Yeah. Uh, use and a tearless shampoo for the face so that, you know, the tears are, I mean, the eyes are protected. Yeah. yeah. Um, and make sure that when the cotton wool is put in the ear, it's not a very small piece of cotton wool. Something that should, can be easily, easily, removed, easily again. removed after the bath. And mm-hmm. this, the reason for not using human shampoos is because the pH level of the dog's skin is very different from our, the pH level of our skin. And uh, the water temperature should be according to the climate. I mean, if you're bathing a dog in slightly cooler months, make sure it's warm it's water. Warm. And we always use warm water because yeah. they, you know, it's it's comfortable. Not hot, of course, warm. Yeah. Then, you know, dry your dog thoroughly. We can't stress that enough. Even if it's a short yeah. coat, even if it's a boxer, even if it's an indie, any breed, any breed, make sure the coat is completely dry. dry. Then, uh, for the long coated, thick coated breeds, use a, a conditioner uh, yeah. after the bath. If you're being dog conditioner dog again, conditioner, dog not dog. sun silk, not <laughs> anything, because we can't. Because a lot of people say, "Oh, Moroccan oil." We're like, no, no, no. no, no. Dog shampoo, dog conditioner, yeah. every all dog products. Yeah. So please. for all long haired breeds, we highly recommend using a conditioner after the first shampoo, and then. It becomes easier when you're drying and, and comb out nicely while drying. 
that's again important for long head breeds because uh, otherwise it gets knotted so uh, then teeth brushing is another thing that is very oh, important yeah yeah, yeah. very teeth, important very important yes so either you know get into the habit from when they're young again you get these uh, finger brushes very you get easy, dog yeah. toothpaste do all that <laughs> give your dog the lot of these dental sticks because you know to avoid tartar minimize tartar so dental yeah. hygiene yeah. Okay. nail cutting is something that we actually don't recommend people at doing home. at home no no because there's a blood vessel right under the nail. every nail yeah under every nail there is a blood vessel so when you're cutting the nail you have to make sure that you cut just a little bit after the uh, blood vessel ends which is not always possible to uh, know so we recommend that you do it um, either at the groomers or at the vet unless you're trained and you know exactly then great but very few people actually know where that quick is no i i i i was too scared i took uh, all the the all the nail cutting i went to the vet like you do yeah, it yeah. i'm not doing it it was yeah, right. that's a yeah. that's a smarter and thing to do then your cleaning you can do a little bit at home you take uh, cotton and just wipe out the yeah. out yeah don't yeah. go too deep because yeah. they have an l shaped ear canal just maybe just the inside of the flap but again don't stick uh, earbuds no no and no, stuff no. like that that you can't do you just Because use the same prone to ear infections as well right yes. yes yes so you can clean the outer flap every week we recommend yeah. that so that you clean with uh, cotton wool maybe you can just put use a little bit of normal saline you get that in those pipettes and you just open that clean it with that and that's it and then make sure it's dry again no no going inside the ear canal that you can get done from the wet or the groom. yeah and yeah. if at any point you notice that ears are smelly like there's some yellow discharge ear mites when there's black a substance that stuff you must take to the vet there are ear drops that the vet will recommend and that's, that's something you that you can take yeah. care of with that oh uh, also one thing i forgot to ask you earlier in the session if you have a little anxious dog or if a dog that is thoroughly terrified of water how do you calm them <laughs> that's a, yeah i mean and how do we do it are you asking or how does how first how, first how do you do it and then we can probably adopt those methods okay so if there are of course quite a few like 30% or 20 to 30% 20 25% i feel yeah, it's ranked. reduced you know, it has reduced people get dogs right from the beginning so there are two things one is a lot of people tell us that uh we have noticed this that the minute you leave your dog and go he's a different person so he is not going to then be as aggressive as he was when if you're around so most of our issues end there and many people say honey how did you do it are how did you do it but they somehow just get that and right and also i think we have confident hands our vibe is confident dogs are such an intelligent species i mean all animals obviously they're on a higher plane yeah yeah and i think they, they you know the touch like when when they like when we hold them when they're in the tub or our staff all of us we're very confident so i think maybe that confidence vibe reduces yeah. their anxiety yeah. this is all self conjecture because we i don't know there are dogs with the parents are shocked that are my dog is so anxious but he's letting you do everything so maybe it's yeah. a vibe that they get that's one yeah. then the remaining dogs who absolutely are so anxious that they want to of course bite, bite down, us, and yeah. it's an occupational hazard all of us have gotten bitten yeah but there's this lovely thing that's come called an elizabeth collar which is always been there so if those dogs like the who cone are, of shame you know you have to when you, if the if that surgery when a surgery is done we have those those are not they're not painful for the dog at Nothing. all okay you just so put that on what to do for 10% of the dogs who are who have to get groomed because it's a shih tzu or a lhasa or a maltese who will get uh, like or or poodles what do you do you don't have an option because if you keep them ungroomed they'll be full of knots so then the then we put that wonderful thing called elizabeth collar and they go about our job yeah then we just go about our job what to do so then they can't bite us they they are still angry but then they can't bite us and you won't believe this by the time the bath is done the drying is done and we come to the hair cut we remove the hairs and call i don't know what i think they maybe just get just... they realize that okay you know what okay, it's now... not so bad yeah but for for the guys at home who are trying it at home again going back to get your dog used to grooming right, from when the they are babies <laughs> that i mean 
9 out of 10 of your problems will get solved there itself and if you haven't done that that's really very hard to do at home if you have a dog who's coming to like snapping at you while uh, bathing or is extremely anxious during a bath i mean the one suggestion i could make one of my three dogs is and slightly anxious than the others the, what happens is a lot of times um you know you your as as a, as the owner you yourself are getting anxious so try to keep yourself calm because your dog is also picking up on your own vibe so right. in a stressful situation like say bath time or whatever if you know your dog is going to be anxious you try to keep yourself calm and then you know use so- use a soothing tone and then maybe like you know associate bath times with like you know a treat and like try to make it a, time, try to make it a positive a yeah, try to yeah. give it the beginning give it the middle give it the end be calm yourself like when a dog is barking and don't start shouting at the dog more then the whole thing becomes more of a negative experience try to make it it's so much like children this is the stuff i'm sure i mean what when you have like this pet parenting same um, a baby parenting seminars or whatever must be like this only so just <laughs> just be calm yourself yeah and stuff like that and uh, you know like i suddenly thought of it that we also play if it's a very very hyper or anxious or sometimes aggressive we play soothing music for pets also yeah we have we soothing music YouTube, yeah 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 and we play it. and then and many that. times if you come to a salon there'll be one table with one of our staff just holding a phone near the dog <laughs> so that you can hear that i and it's actually worked we didn't know it would i think we yeah, just stumbled it, upon it one day we tried it and we've now got a now, playlist of soothing music and yeah. we know which dog needs it and one one person pavana is just standing there with the phone yeah, playing the music yeah. which song do they like <laughs> it's not song so much it's as the music, music. Yeah. yeah yeah it's an instrument it's like i think plinky plonky is far in frequency it's a frequency also no of the music oh. Yeah, 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 it is a you know there it is if you go on to YouTube you'll find it. It's yeah. a different frequency. Yeah, you type I'm in gonna... dog calming music, you'll get lots of a, a playlist. Yeah, yeah. I'm so gonna... we do, <laughs> yeah, we do, do all do. kinds of permutation <laughs> combination. Yeah. The... <laughs> Now I want to hear stories from your salon. The easiest and most difficult dog breeds to groom. Ah, uh, she Gauri and I both have a. Uh, uh, I think. slight bias we love big dogs i mean love we love all dogs dog. we, lo- we love all dogs but the big ones are just and in fact you get these tibetan mastiffs french mastiffs and people think <laughs> they lo- but they're so sweet to groom and <laughs> they love hugs and stuff so my personal <laughs> favorite it's always an indi but after that the large breeds are my personal yeah, favorite yeah, i find them easier it. to groom yeah and um the, there are so many i yeah, like uh, these like retrievers and all that like louis for instance if you tell him shake hands and all even if they don't know it okay <laughs> yeah. if you like touch their paw they'll go on giving you like it's very cute it's very cute and then <laughs> another thing is siberian huskies are very oh, talkative oh, they, they're oh while they're being groomed <laughs> they're singing howling it's very cute it's full entertainment so we have a slight bias towards larger dogs and we find them easier to groom actually i mean there is no yeah, such yeah, thing as yeah. a breed that's easier to grow there is no such thing But there are unfriendly labradors and uh, there are friendly rottweilers so there is no friendly or unfriendly breed really yeah, but there's a uh, the tougher ones are the small breeds though yeah, because you know no no you're cutting near the eyes then you need them to stand still yeah so the smaller ones are slightly more uh, difficult to groom yeah but the stories stories the the from the salon are basically like what we told you we have a lot of like it's 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 a back breaking job of course and we are telling you the more uh, the fun part the of it the fun end of it but at the end of the day you're hanging with them and then you know they get so used to being with you for two hours and they so, do all kinds of things like like i said they suddenly like even louis if you tell him that like, if for whatever they'll just go on giving for at the end of it then and even you are tired of they can't just keep shaking the hand because they've started <laughs> they've started it then they then we have these huskies who sing and then there are some actually dogs and this story again we've heard from pet parents uh, they the car pulls on to 16th road the dog realizes they're coming to the salon they get super excited they open the door the dog is some dogs need to be taken in these there are some labs and retrievers who just 
come in straight they know they go that's straight the, jump into the tub and they're just like ready and that's the funny that's very part. sweet that's those, very those cute those are the really really like cute and we, we love those yeah yeah stuff. and then we have people saying that you know sometimes we're driving past 16th road with no intention of coming to the salon because they're just passing by and the dog is really excited because they think they're coming for a bath yeah, and we love yeah. hearing stories like that those are some really cute stories i mean of course there are some like she said we've gotten bitten it's an occupational hazard you know that's not there's nothing we can really yeah, do about yeah. it so there are some but they're all vaccinated dogs and stuff like that our staff we get you know the whole rabies protocol tetanus and all that is yeah. done in any case yeah and and uh, like i think i told you i mentioned this to you before that we don't know any pet parents names we know only the names so, or if any your name I... is saved as louis mum then there's a louis dad and the coco <laughs> sister Then we yeah. have some Henry mother-in-law because it's <laughs> late. We don't know who it is. It's somebody's grandmother, but it's all dog and then family and then relationship. Yeah. So, um, I think the only like sad or bad story is that we feel very sad when there are sometimes dogs come to us and they're in such a bad shape. You know, mm-hmm. either because they, you know, somebody at home was trapped for whatever reason they've been unwell or whatever, and there are times that I mean the dog is really in a bad shape. That kind of that, is the only time that makes so, us feel yeah. bad. Because you know, then you have to either shave the coat, or and the dematting takes really takes long. Time. You know, and then you Feet notice up. that under the coat there are, you know, it's happened not often, but once or twice we've noticed maggots yeah. where the owner doesn't even know. Though that kind of breaks our heart a little bit, but those luckily are very, very less true. because now dogs are all part of the family. family which is This good old thing. school is, you know, kutta hai bhar rakho is an old school now. Now everybody, yeah, you know, their birthdays are being celebrated. There are dogs who come to us. When the bride has gone this, for bridal really makeup, funny. the dog has come to our salon to get ready because the ro- dog is the ring bearer, and then oh. we put like very cute tuxedo, and then you like and you know so many. It's so not so many. So many tell us that you know I'm getting married tomorrow. Can you imagine the bride is only calling us? I'm getting married tomorrow, but he has to be very ready. Yeah, we are taking him yeah. for the ceremony. Yeah, and out of town, that one uh, happy yeah. got taken to Kerala for the wedding. Yeah, and clothes are made. <laughs> Then there there are brides who say that you know my lehenga color is you know whatever some pink. So can you put pink bows? Birthday parties like the birthday child's whatever is blue theme. So then the dog it, it's we, and Christmas, those, Christmas, New Year. Year. Kanpati, Diwali, Diwali. Everybody wants to get their dog ready. So they're part of the family. Dog because... and cat, huh? yeah. even cats, even cats. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. those, those. This is all like the the loveliest part of you know being groomers and being in this. Yeah, because and finding so our nice stories like this. Yeah, yeah. That that's what also I've noticed in today's today's um, pet parents. They're nuanced. They are well informed. Yes. Yes. Maybe. Good care. There's a own form of love language. It's so absolutely. It's so absolutely. There's so much love and so much kindness. It's 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 yes. lovely. Like it you is, said, nobody keeps is. nobody keeps the dog outside anymore. They're yeah. in the oh, no. they're near sofa. They're on your lap. It's lovely to see. Yeah. Most of the, like we when we have our phone, most DPs of people are their dogs. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's like that's an ultimate testament yeah, to your yeah, like love yeah. that you know never mind your child or husband or mother or whatever your dog like even you yeah. know all of us have and it's yeah. it's very heartwarming yeah yeah and uh, urmila we've seen the change happening in front of yeah. us like from 20 years ago yeah. to now it's the, it was so different back then 20 years back it the, the dog wasn't a part of the family and now he is like the center of attention another actually an uh, another not connected to this another nice part i feel for us is that we've actually seen generations of dogs oh, so like yeah. you know we've had a dog coming to us 20 years ago and then passing away and then that family's got another dog who we've seen then that dog has had puppies and those puppies also come to us that yeah. we were just like puddles when that happens yeah, you know totally. because coco's puppies have gone to three different homes but coco's also got an appointment her babies have also got appointments <laughs> with us yeah, yeah. It's, very, it's very also cute yeah. That's lovely. Like yeah. these tons. I'm sure you. I'm sure you must be taking like a ton of pictures and like tons of pictures. Things. I can't like, tell you how all many of this pictures we have. We keep sending you Louis pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've run out of time, but I just oh, have okay. one last question. Sure. Take over, takeaways, especially for dog parents. Quick, quick takeaways. I mean, uh, like, just to recap, you know, uh, try and spend as much time as you can with your dog. be hands on run your even if you're just sitting and watching a tv show just run your dog uh, run run your fingers through your dog's coat notice if there's any changes or whatever um 
Uh, send your dog, dog regularly. Yeah, send, send your dog, dog as often dog as you can or you want to for regular groomings. Uh, be aware of any uh, like alert for any kind of changes in like say if he's itching excessively or panting excessively. Just have a tick and flea schedule. Routine, like yeah. a, like make sure that you give them some tick prevention yeah. regularly. Don't think that oh my dog never has got ticks. Suddenly there'll be a tick infestation. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. yeah, love your dog. Yeah. Lots and lots of love, of course. Uh, that is the most yeah. important. Yes, love yes. Is, I think all I've spoke, whoever I've spoken to, love, show, sh- just shower love and kindness. Yes, absolutely. Totally. And the return that you get is unparalleled. Im- immeasurable. It's, it is. Nobody can love you like your dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Urmila and Gauri, yeah. for talking to Most us. Most welcome. But this was fabulous. I have enjoyed yeah. it. We yeah. hope that we've answered some questions that people have it yeah yeah lovely you, talking to you lovely lovely thank you for you having reminded us. me of some pointers that i also have to take care of because sometimes you just take it for granted okay we've done we we've, we've tick marked we've done this 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 but oh i didn't check the paws bit correct um, yeah. uh, uh, it's it, the um the skin makes sure then to brush every single day so it, these are all extremely important and it's get a coat tonic, tonic. Huh? get a coat tonic that coat tonic also helps it's very important yeah, that and we also have a little deodorizer for a little perfume. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, this was lovely. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you so much. Welcome. So much. Thank you so much for taking the time out. I know it's Saturday and you're extremely busy with That's all fine. the pets coming in. No, no, it's been a pleasure. It, it was lovely. Thank, thank okay, you. Okay, see bye. you. Talk to you soon. Bye. bye. Okay, bye.